going to come out? Feel free to set her on any bridge, yeah. Let's grab one feather, it's interesting. And you said no training so far, is that right? Uh, she's um, target trained. Target trained, okay. Can I but see a couple targets? In the, uh, in the panic of trying to figure out how to get her in here this morning, I left all my Okay, you can use stuff. ours. That's okay, we came prepared. What, what kind does of- What she like for treats? Treats. That's a good question. I mean, I sugared her up with banana trees, but I guess we can just try. Let's try some of those. Um, yeah, since you've already done training, I'll just wash you with the clicker and, uh, and do what you do. Add some of these in there, too. So as you guys see, in a new environment, sometimes birds will eat a little bit slower. So a big key is making sure the bird's done eating the treat before we try to work on something else. We make that mistake all the time. It's really common. Did she take one? Yeah. Uh -huh. she, took three. Oh, she might not like this. <laughs> like, what was the first one, a safflower? I don't know if this was tiny. Not like that. Oh, no. Try some almonds. Oh my gosh, you're such a pain. Mm -hmm. Try this one. No? Yeah, what was the first one? Do you know? I don't know. A little <laughs> white seed, I think. Yeah. I've got some more safflowers. Okay, if you want to give safflowers, I think that's what they might have been. If you want to trade those. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Take a step back for a sec. Did everybody see what happened? So, this is what we call the birdie bubble. Now, it's a relatively new thing we've been talking about, but when you are in really engaged with that bird, you're in that bird's personal space, that bird's bubble. And so, when, when you went to give the treat and you were still kind of in the bubble with the stick, she was like, treat, stick, treat, stick, and there was a confusion. So it's important to kind of take that, that target away so it's no longer in her space. Give the treat. And then we remove ourselves from that personal bubble until that treat's consumed, right? And once the birds, there's, there's kind of different situations for it, but that situation you'll find like, this next one, do repetition and make sure the stick's hidden, give the treat, and then just step back for a second. You want to turn that one? So you see when you entered her bubble, you had her attention. Hide the stick. Oh, okay, so step back. So part of what happened there is it's a crap treat, okay? So let's see if we can find a better treat. Do you see what she's doing there? She could have taken it and she chose not to. And so I think what happened with you is you tried to make it easier and bring it closer, but she's totally capable of taking it from that distance. Uh -huh. So the closer you get, like she couldn't bite me from where I was at, but she could take the seed, which is why I offered it that way. <laughs> but she's suckering you in yeah. and then nailing you. <laughs> yeah. So don't get suckered in. I know it's hard. So that almost, that Did almost that make happened sense? with you earlier with the eclectus. And fortunately, he went, or he went for your ring for a second, uh, but I was worried he was gonna go for your hand. Fortunately, the bird is pretty chill. But you offer the treat here, where the rest of us are offering it, just barely coming in, oh, and the bird's at this end of the perch, so it's not like the bird's here and can run across and get me. It's like we're at the bird's maximum reach, slowly going towards the bird. It's such a subtle little detail, but, but we will, it's very unlikely we will get bit because I don't want to, and I don't trust any bird, right? And so you want to just slowly come in, and that, that, that same thing with a stick, I'm coming in from, like the bird can't come any further, so I slowly come in until just barely can touch it. If I come in here, the bird can run over and bite any part of the stick, and it can, I don't, I don't want biting the stick as a trick, I want the bird to just barely touch the stick.
<laughs> I know this isn't going to be fun for you, but I'd like you to try to give her a sunflower seed <laughs> without okay. getting bit. Okay. So take the take the target stick and the clicker out of the equation. Just set it down, and just try to hand her a sunflower seed without getting bit and see if she likes it. Good. She's just playing with it. Yeah. Yeah, she'll just roll it around there for a while and decide if she likes something. So reinforcement is going to increase the likelihood of getting that behavior again. Punishment is going to decrease the likelihood of getting that behavior again. So what's probably happening is there's some sort of reinforcement from nailing it. Okay? Some of it can be uh, immediately reinforcing because the bird gets a huge reaction and an ow and like in a full on energy change. And maybe the bird likes that. We don't know for sure. We do know for sure that the bird likes banana chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna work with banana chips. But we don't know what else the bird really likes. And the example with Claudia and Sunshine with the free flight, the, where, with all the accidental punishments, the bird would fly to Claudia, and then she would give a treat, so that's a positive reinforcement, plus reinforcement. And then she would yell, yeah, sunshine, which we don't know if the bird likes or not. It could be plus punishment to decrease that behavior on accident, or it could have been reinforcing, increasing that behavior. Uh, and then she was trying to pet the bird, and the bird was like, trying to not be pet, so that was plus punishment. So if you have two plus punishments and only one treat, you're going to decrease the likelihood of that behavior, which was flying to her on command. In your situation, there's more positive reinforcement, there's more reinforcement, I should specific, specify, than there is punishment. And we don't really want to work in the punishment realm, we want to work on the reinforcement realm. Right now, a sunflower seed doesn't have enough value to do what we're asking. And a bite might be more reinforcing to the bird than stepping up for sunflower seeds. Does that make sense? Whereas, if the treat value is higher, which can be a better treat, or it can be more hunger, that's gonna make the sun, more hunger is gonna make the sunflower seed a higher value, which we don't really wanna work with more hunger. But uh, the absolute favorite treat, if that's a banana chip, now that has more value than the reinforcement of biting you. So what we wanna do is recognize that there's a likelihood this particular bird might be getting reinforcement from biting you. Since that's a behavior that's started to happen more and more, something is reinforcing it. So let's avoid getting bit, which is going to start to uh, shape the behavior that we want. And instead, we'll, we'll show this bird what a good interaction should be through only giving its favorite treat. Go ahead and, and try this time and see if she's more receptive to your treat. She's scared of the bowl. Good. That was good, you recognized it. Yeah, she loves banana trips. It's her thing. <laughs> Are you willing to try target training with her? Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> try. Yeah. Okay, so let's walk through what it needs to look like before you do it. So the idea is, again, you're by working on T-Stand, you're limiting the range of motion the bird has. If you did it on a countertop, the bird could run anywhere on that countertop. But here, the bird at this direction can only get to this point. If it's here, it has a little bit more range. So right now we're gonna do it where the bird's gotta come to this end, and it can only reach so far. There's two ways to do this, only one is right. You wanna slowly approach until the bird can just barely touch it, right? That's what we want. We don't want you to come in so close that it has a lot of stick to, to take its anger out on, because then we're putting anger on cue, right? And then we're going through chopsticks a lot. So with that in mind, you want to pick a spot and slowly go towards it, and the bird's going to, you know, you don't want to frustrate the bird, but it's going to be a slow process, and then it'll touch, as opposed to going too close and then having to move it, you're going to be tormenting and taunting the bird. So I have the clicker, so go ahead and go to the edge of the perch like we simulated here. And, and, just... why, and why don't you deliver the treat? Okay. That will make her less scared. And then just slowly approach. Good. Remove the stick all the way. Excellent.
So we'll go do this again? To the other side, maybe? Uh, we'll do, uh, do one more here, and then we'll go to the other side. Good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set the stick down, go ahead and walk to the other edge. Like, yeah, just kind of out of view is what I mean. Try it again? Yep. Perfect. See how she didn't go in too close at first? That's what it should look like. When people do that in the beginning, and this is important for anybody who's, who's teaching other people in your household how to do this, please walk through it how I just walked through it and show what it should and shouldn't look like so that you don't start the whole process wrong. Because although the bird understands touching the stick, it's a treat, it's important that it understands that we're all going to do it the same way. And we'll end with one more here. Perfect. So you can leave the bird out. You guys just have a seat. I'll take the stick back. Um, do you guys have any questions on, on that part? No. Okay, and you haven't had any sort of interaction like that before, right? Not like that. So yesterday we talked about the 60-40, or Friday, I keep saying yesterday, we talked about the 60-40 rule. And the 60-40 rule in this situation is this bird likes Shane more than McKenna. So Shane, we're gonna say is 60% like, McKenna is 40% like. It might actually be more like 80-20, okay? For us to have a successful bird that's family friendly, we need to skew this back and keep it between 60 and 40 in both directions. So, how do we get there? It involves McKenna doing the things that the bird likes the most, okay? Banana chips, target training, things that it doesn't like is going in the cage. So, you don't do those, Shane does those. And that, what that's gonna do is it's going to increase your likability to this bird. If I had a banana chip and I said, will you step up? And I would approach it slightly differently. That's a different interaction, right? She had the ability to say no, but she didn't. Because there was a reason. Do you want to? No. What about for a banana chip? Hell oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> it's a big difference. There's also something else I did there that I talked about on Friday. Yeah. That was awesome. When I approach the front, <laughs> that's why you're getting nailed. Yeah. Okay, and this is what a, a lot of people do, but she's willing to step back. And I don't know why we ever started doing this. We must have got bit enough in the beginning to do this, but I offered the treat just close enough that had 100% of her attention on the treat. She still saw my hand out of the corner of her eye, and she was like, okay. Weird. <laughs> and, and, but she was willing to do it for that. So the point of that example is asking for permission. Do you feel, honestly, don't, don't say one way or the other based on what you think I want to hear, but do you feel like she would have stepped up to me the first time or would have bit me? She would have bit you. Yeah, and that's what I felt too. So the whole, do you want to? kept my fingers on my hands, right? And create that situation so the bird actually wants to step up for you. Because yeah. definitely the point is not to get bit, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so you so kind of showed her the tree, right? And then did you say step up or anything? Nope. Or do you want to just... huh? show him again? Do you want to show him again? Yeah. <laughs> the right angle for you here without spooking the bird too much. See how there's a lot of time to react there without making a big scene about pulling away? Step up. Good. Okay, so that's what we want to see. And in your mind or out loud, you're welcome to say it. Do you want to step up? Will you step up? Also try to pay attention to keep your energy really calm. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds all like foo foo and whatever, but it's, we've, we've actually energy trained birds where our cue for the bird 
is a shift in our energy. And so I'm a firm believer that they feel all of that and have a bird that I can prove it with. So just keep that calm, that calm feeling. And don't feel like forced to succeed. So if you don't feel like it's happening, just stay calm and back up. Good. Yeah. That was perfect. Excellent. Yeah? Yeah. The pick was for you, not the bird. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because now she's grabbing me. Yeah. yeah. Saying, Come here. Yep. <laughs> this is important. Until the trick is learned as a trick, then you can introduce a second trainer. So with the step up training, I want to make sure that I see that it's a clearly received, will you step up? Yes, every time. Then we'll have McKenna jump in and do it. She's like, yay. <laughs> Same thing goes for a target training, right? Everybody has subtle nuances, whether it's your body posture. There's so many subtle things that change the cue for the bird. He looks like he's ready. Shoot. Shoot. Good. Good. Excellent. Now this time, you held her for about one second. This time I want you to hold for two seconds before putting her down. So do the treating, everything else the same. <laughs> two, one thousand down. Awesome, okay? This is what we refer to as small approximations. My example, I got really heightened and jumped around the room. That would potentially trigger a bite. It may not, but there's a chance it would. And we don't wanna risk that. So we're gonna slowly increase this by one second. So you can do three seconds this time. Look at that. Oh, so mm -hmm. reset, don't treat. What happened differently that time? Maybe I went too far in front or? Something seemed different. Yeah. Um, maybe you just go a little slower. So this is what you're seeing. She does that. You go to pick her up, she bites you. Mm -hmm. shift of weight what happened. So I wish you could watch that footage. What you did, she grabbed you and you went in with the treat before she had shifted her weight onto you. She went up. So to leave. She, so she was maybe feeling <clears throat> unsecure about it? She wasn't fully it's committed. A, it's a different, oh. yeah, it's a different behavior. So it's different if she puts her foot on you versus puts her weight on you. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you were gonna help me up from the chair and I just gave you my hand, but no weight, that's different than me fully committing and giving you my weight to actually have you help me. I think Dave waits for the full commitment before lifting. You waited for her to put her foot on you before you started going. Okay. And I'm managing, it's, it's a fine tuning between just doing this a lot, but the distance that the treat's going to her it's not luring, but it's misdirecting a little bit from any time I sense or feel she's about to bite, I bring the tree in a little closer so I get her attention back on the tree. And then I start to pick her up and give her the treat as, as I've got her weight. I think with you, the weight hadn't shifted over, and that's where you got the bite. So, if you feel that foot touch, 
bring the food in a little bit closer, not, not where you have to ever pull it away, just like with a target stick, you don't wanna to have to like pull back, but you're going to reserve that extra little bit going closer and closer to re-get her attention anytime it starts to shift away. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you have a pretty good idea of, of what to do differently this time? I think so. I'm afraid to stay still. Good. And even on that, I go so far, you you almost could have got bit going back. Yeah, that's right. I was wondering if she was going down to get me. <laughs> when you put her down, don't forget this hand can still help misdirect a little bit. Okay? So when you put her down, make sure that you can clearly get that hand out of the way. Versus if you put her down and you leave the hand there too long, she'll, she will bite you. And you could feel it. Yeah. Right? You sensed it? I did. Okay, so I'm going to keep a little distance. Bring the tree in closer. There we go. She seemed a little yeah. gun shy on the tree, right? So feel free to bring that a little closer. If you watch that back and replay, you're pretty far back. And because you were so far back, you had less ability to fix the situation if it started to go south quickly. But if you're a little bit closer, you have a little less movement to need to go to re-get her attention away from the hand you're having your step on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Will this be the last repetition if it goes well? Good step back. Okay, this is what we call minus punishment. So we're removing something the bird wanted to decrease behavior. Behavior trying to decrease, there's the bird's face now. <laughs> she's her eyes started to yeah. turn on me. So we want to make sure that we get a desire to step up. So we'll go ahead and try again when you think you're ready, but don't push it. Do you want to step up? Uh -huh. And no. Uh -huh. Go ahead and give another treat. Okay, the reason I clicked the second time is the bird made a conscious decision to not bite you and step back to the perch the way we want it. So just to step up is a trick. Stepping off is a trick as well. So the reason I'm able to... Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did treat. you see what another I was talking treat. about? Yeah. Okay. Another treat, another treat. I clicked when you put her down, so see that focus there. And yes. do another treat there for her, please. So yeah, everybody pay really close attention one more time on this step up. How intent she is on you and what you're going to do, as opposed to her being in control and luring you in to bite you. <coughs> Everyone watch her her face. Okay, so that was a little mix there for a second, right? There we go. So I didn't click on those. <laughs> so it's getting, you can feel it, it's extending. She's more, she's less likely to go off of him. I almost wonder, but I don't know if he could give the treat. Yeah. On the perch. Okay. Because we're running into a little. It's not escalated. It? No. <laughs> okay, so what she's explaining is, uh, is FR2, which I need to explain that in the bridge of good. So FR2 means that every second behavior gets one treat. This isn't. You feel good? Okay. And down. Damn it. So that is, it's such a fine. It's a, it's a oh. hard thing to explain. See what I'm talking it, about? Yeah, right? it had to do with your hand with the food. Um, gosh, so it's, it, it's, uh, it's like milliseconds of signs. Why you try to explain try? it? I'm struggling explaining it to you. I'm like, you know what I mean? 
um, it's that mental misdirection thing we were talking about, right? But it, but it, it has to just be misdirection versus it's on the verge of teasing in a way. Do you have a quarter for free? Okay. I teach a magic class when we perform on missing cruise lines. And I start by having everybody grab the coin. Put it back. They grab the coin. They put it back. They grab the coin. And they get vanish. Okay? <laughs> Still here. The point of that is that I'm setting up a rhythm. I'm also teaching you that this means the coin's still here. So 50-50 chance, you guys have no idea what hand it's in because the motion is the exact same, okay? It happens to still be here. But what we need with this is that same misdirection. The misdirection of, which hand's in it? Okay, so the, the, the idea behind this, is it's, it's a very fine thing to try to explain, but the idea is there's a rhythm, and then there's a mental misdirection of where's the treat coming from? In other words, what hand is the coin in? I don't know, but I gotta pay attention. So it's a, it's a rhythm and a focus that you're, you're guiding. Like when I do that magic trick, I'm telling you guys where to look based on everything with my body language and the rhythm and, and it's the same with, same with this. So because I want to end on a good note, I'll chop this one in half actually. I'm gonna do one, I'll have you do one last one and then that'll be it for the session. It's a really hard thing to understand and to explain. Step up. There. See, my left hand is directing where I wanted him to look. Her. Her, him, it, <laughs> she, it. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> so, I don't know if that helps in any way, but I'm directing Focus. the magic trick. I'm telling people to look here. I'm setting the rhythm of what I want. And then, regardless of where the coin ends up, all the intention's still the same. So, I'm telling the audience where to look just as I'm telling her where to look. And I want to direct her to understand you're going to step up and here's where you're going back. And then there's still a hesitation where she might want to uh, reach down and bite me. But the way I put her down, the perch was here. So again, it's harder for her to reach around and grab me. I still have time to, to see it. I don't, is it. Does that make sense? It's such a hard thing to explain. Do you feel like you understand, or is it still unclear? I think I understand the concept. It's probably just practice. Yeah. It is, and it's, you know, it, it sounds ridiculous, but believe me, if you guys videotape your training sessions, you will see these little subtle nuances when you watch it back. If you have the ability to record it in slow motion, like at 240 frames per second, and watch it back eight times slower, you'll see little pins and flashes that you miss normally because we see things at roughly 30 frames a second. And that's what the video plays back at. So if you film it at eight times faster, you're gonna see so much more and your mind will start to learn what to look for on a subconscious level. But if you want, I'd love to see you try one more time. And uh, I think my almonds aren't very good anymore. You have a good treat? I have a little bit of banana left. Okay. I can get you a good banana if you need me to. <laughs> yeah. Good. So other than missing the perch, that that's what you should see more of. And I think the pattern that I'm seeing with you is you have a few really good reps and then something changes and you have a couple that, that start to frustrate her because you lose a certain nuance in Something, I can't yeah, define I, it yet. I found I was more focused, like she starts to come up my arm, or I'm more, and then I lose focus on what you're doing I with this hand. Having her look at this, because I'm focused here, and then she, I think she then starts to focus. Okay. Yeah. There. The other thing that, um, do you have another banana? <laughs> uh, let me grab them real quick. There. So there's okay. another thing that is important, especially with this size bird. Did you notice that I grab her feet? Mm hmm. 
Do you normally do that? I try to. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, we had a little, she got her toe stuck in her cage door. Okay. And she bit me so hard right here that I, it's been over a week. I still can't feel the top of my thumb. How Oof. big a piece so, do you want? You want to break them? A little, them? uh, a little gun shy. So I mentioned in the <laughs> programming earlier, it's the, same, about that. it's the same thing. She's going to start to associate the feeling of my thumb on the top of her foot with the exact sensation of eating this banana. So I'm going to bring her over to this side. Okay, my thumb is on her foot as she's eating the banana. That will start to associate this equals treat. This equals treat on the scientific level, right? So the more you can do that in a really controlled environment with a high value food like that is, the easier she'll be with that, okay? You wanna end on, try? on one more? That's that flag going off my head, but. <laughs> I'm like scared, Let's try. but we're doing a bigger piece, so it should be <laughs> successful, right? <laughs> oh geez, huh? Okay, ready? And down. Perfect. Cool. The value of the treat helps a ton in that. I treat. would say round of applause, but don't, because right now this person. <laughs> that, that was awesome. That's what you need to like let that sit in, memorize what that felt like. And when you come back, this is a big tip that, that we share with people one-on-one. -on -one. Visualize what your training session is going to look like. Also anticipate the what ifs. What would you do? if she was about to bite. Well, me, I would bring the treat in a little bit closer. Think about that for a sec. Visualize what it would look like. And then go into the training session. I know it sounds really corny and, and foo fooey, but when your mind's already practiced it enough, it's, it's going to just happen. There's a lot of proof behind that. And so many cute ways. <laughs>